Good morning and welcome to my sewing room. Today um, I wanted to show you what I did with my jelly roll ball. Um, I got the concept from the pattern um, jelly roll rug pattern and I love the way that she creates this ball of fabric and I think it's such a a versatile item. I think you can use it to make a lot of different things. Um, today I am making a farmer's market bag and I'm really excited to take it out to my farmer's market and fill it up with fun things like honey and basil and other items. Um, I started the idea with this. Um, this was my test item. I just sewed some of the strips together to make a small um, small ball of fabric and I decided that it was good enough to develop further. Um, and this was my first test with the actual ball of fabric that I was using for the actual bag and as you can see it came out a little wonky and that is because I followed the fabric I let it curve as much as it would and I just followed the fabric so on this bag I turned it up so it laid flat and I didn't I guess maybe pull and shift and um, I'll show you how I did it in the video and hopefully it makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know. <laughs> I'll be happy to answer any questions. So let's get into the video. So, um, first off, I am going to place my Jelly Roll ball in this batting pitcher. I got this, I think, at Cost Plus, and it does a great job of keeping the ball in place and not having it roll all over the floor. Um, I'm actually going to re-roll this because the yellow is going to be the base of the bag, and that is where we start sewing. I am going to measure about nine inches on this one. Um, I'm going to mark it with a pin and and fold it over. That's going to be um, my starting point. So the first thing you want to do is to try to think. Okay, what when I turn my fabric? Is it going to build out or is it going to build in? You want it to build out because it's going to be, it's not going to be manageable if it builds inside. So you want your, your bag to build on the outer side of you, outer side of your machine. And um, if you don't have this happen, if it starts building to the inside, it's no big deal. Just Pull it off your machine and flip it over and start, you know, do your um, your stitch, back and forth stitch um, to secure your stitch and just, just pull it off and flip it over. You will be fine. <laughs> so I think that is going to build right, but we'll see if I'm wrong. <laughs> and I'm going to adjust, adjust my stitch first, actually. Before I start sewing, I want to make sure I have a good zigzag. <sighs> Not that one. That one's good. Let's go for a little wider. Right. I think that is going to work. Okay. 
So I got my stitch down. Okay, I'm hoping that this kind of comes above the bag a little so you can see. I probably will have to adjust again, but let's see if this works. I tend to get my fingers into the shot and block the view. Um, it's so bright in the middle. I wish I could get it less bright. What if I do that, maybe? Okay, let's start. I'll go back and forth a little bit, lock in my stitch, keep my stitch down, and we're off to the races. And you are just butting up your two strips together and getting both edges of both strips. So you want to make sure that those edges are, are both caught. And I'm going to flip it. I like to kind of flip. Flip mine. And again, we're just making sure that we bite both edges of both strips. And we're making sure that they're nice and close together. I feel like making the actual rope is kind of the hardest part of the bag or the most time consuming. Here you're just you know, working the strips and letting the machine kind of do its job for you. Sometimes the foot gets in the way, so just kind of be mindful, making sure your foot doesn't get stuck on an edge. On this one, I'm not going to turn it, I'm just going to go round because I kind of got a good circular edge. And it's starting to curve now. So the next one, I am going to, the next pass, I'm gonna flip it up.
that's a good base of the bag, so that's good. And I'm just gonna kind of pull it up so it lays flat. Underneath my nipple. And on the straight edge, you don't have to worry about looking it up. You just get a so. And then again, on the curved edge, you're flipping it up. got off the edge a little bit so I'm gonna backtrack just a few stitches and start stitching again because you don't want big gaps especially because we're gonna be putting weight in the bag so you don't want holes where the stitches miss love this fabric. This fabric is from the Tattooed Quilter. I think it's Blossom. Comes in all different colors. It is one of my favorite basics. I love tiny little, I love dots. I love dots. So it's almost like a dot but it's a little bit more interesting because it's a flower. Okay, so I am now on to the honeycomb fabric. This is Bee's Life. I don't know how much you can see. Hopefully I can adjust the brightness a little bit. If not, I'm sorry. trying to let it let it be natural really um, I'm letting the machine do the work I am not trying to fight it or force it and I'm hoping that will give me a fuller circle and fuller curves and less wonkiness <laughs> I 
I went off. I went off the edge. So, um, it's actually not that bad, but I'm barely biting it, I guess. So I'm just going to go back a few stitches and continue. I thought my black one was going to be my favorite one, the black and yellow, but oh, I really like this one. And you kind of want to have enough, um, enough rope so it's not pulling, so you want to have some rope available. All right, now I am at the white, and um, I believe I made six of this darker yellow, three of the honeycomb yellow, and then two of each of the three different whites that I'm using. So that would be 15 strips in total that I made. It's getting bigger. And I totally love it. the edge. Ooh, ha -ha. Let's see. Where is my bottom? I think they both look really good. I don't know that it matters what side I use because I don't see. Oh, there it is. Okay. So this is going to be the inside of the bag because I can see my starting line, um, my starting point. So that's good to think about because I'll want to end it on the seam side. I have found that lifting it helps like even when quilting if I lift because sometimes on the table edge will um, kind of fight against me so if I just lift it a little bit and I'm, I'm feeling that with this bag too if I just lift it it makes it so much easier
I liked how the other one ended at, on the curve. So you didn't have the fold down in the middle of the bag. So I'm thinking that I am going to force it to end early and just kind of tack this edge into the, the seam. It's finished and I don't think I wanna unfinish it. So I think I'll just kinda of come and tack it into the second seam. So I'll jump off and then jump back on. Let's see if I can do this and make it look good. So we said that this is the edge that's going to be inside, so I need to tack it on the outside. on the curve okay so I will pin it lengthwise oh, I need a bigger pin than that one oh that's two pins Okay, I think I'll do that. Just kind of keep it in place. And finish it. And now for handles. <laughs> I did leather handles on the last bag and I'm gonna do wooden handles on this one. I think those will look really pretty. And I specifically didn't use black on this bag because I wanted to use a brown handle. 